that I agree constitution cantos today. Uh, my own class uh, has had the, the first two or three cantos fairly carefully explained. The, the idea of the program is set out in cantos one and two, uh, very clearly in fact, uh, and uh, that in cantos four and five, not in three, uh, you, you can see how the process begins to take place, the interweaving of, of, of the theme. Uh, and with uh, a knowledge of, of those four out of the first five initial cantos, uh, there's nothing that need hit you at all uh, until you get a hell of a long way through the book. Uh, the, the process remains the same. New matter is introduced from time to time. Uh, sometimes it's rather slow business introducing the new matter, uh, but uh, once it's there, it starts being woven in, uh, and everything is woven in the same way. Uh, the Pisan cantos really only carry on that, but there is uh, something new that comes into it, uh, and uh, I want you to listen uh, my own class and, and tell me next time uh, what you think is the new element that has come in in these cantos. Uh, for it is there, all right. I'm going to read a small part of canto number, oh, what the hell is it? I have to turn back and find the number. Pages and pages and pages. Uh, Lockup uh, for being a wicked traitor, uh, betraying the United States by comforting Mussolini uh, with broadcasts from Rome. Uh, and uh, he was kept in, in the, uh, at first, in a row of cages inhabited otherwise only by people who were about to be hung. Uh, several of them were hung. Uh, and, uh, then they moved him off to a hospital uh, in the same camp. Uh, and uh, it, it was uh, a pretty uncomfortable situation, as you can imagine. Uh, and how on earth Pound managed in these circumstances to write poetry, goodness only knows. But people do. Uh, there's a still more striking case. Uh, do you know the poem that Patrick Pierce wrote the night before he was shot? Pierce, Pierce uh, was one of the leaders of the Irish Rebellion, uh, and uh, he, he learned he was to be shot tomorrow, sometime fairly late in the evening, and he spent the night writing a poem, and it is a rather beautiful poem. Uh, it, it is not a great poem, for, for Pierce was not a great poet, but, but uh, it, it is a, a fine piece of work, uh, and, and he put it in uh, waiting uh, to, to be shot. Uh, Dr. Johnson said, uh, I, I think, uh, that you can depend upon it, that when a man knows he is going to be hung in the morning, it sharpens his mind very considerably. Uh, and, uh, well, you, you can take your chance of, of whether uh, you find any of this in the pound or not. Uh, this is the last page or two of Canto 80, and then I will read Canto... Uh, God damn it, I pulled out the bloody marker. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I'll read the, the, the other one I want to read, which I think is eight is three, isn't it? Oh dear me, I've lost it. We'll have to hunt for it anyway. No, it must be 81. Sure. Yes, that's it, 81. Eight, uh, the last bit of 80 and the whole of 81 I'll read if we have time to get to it all. If calm be after tempers, then the ants seem to wobble 
was the morning sun catches their shadows. That ASCII duet, MacAllister, also Comfort, KP, special mention, on Sicko, Penrith, Turner, Toff, the airy, no fortune and with a name to come. Bankers, Sites, Hildebrand, Cornelison, Armstrong, special mention, KP, White, Gracia Fidel, Gracia Wiseman, not William, Africanus, with a smoky torch through the unending labyrinth of the souterrain, or remembering Carlton, let him celebrate Christ in the grave, and if the corn cat be beaten, Demeter has lain in my furrow. This wind is lighter than swans down. The day moves not at all. So, Gufford and Bowen, men of no fortune and with a name to come. His helmet is used for a piss pot. This helmet is used for my foot bath. El Pinor can count the shingle under Tsoali. El Pitone was wasting tooth wash as I lay by the drain hole. The guard's opinion is lower than that of the prisoners of the army. Oh, to be in England now that Winston's out. <laughs> now that there's room for doubt and the bank may be the nation's and the long years of patience and labor's vacillations may have let the bacon come home. To watch how they'll slip and slide, watch how they'll try to hide the real portent. To watch a while from the tower where dead flies lie thick over the old charter, forgotten, oh, quite forgotten but confirming John's first one. And still there, if you climb over attic rafters, to look at the fields, are they till? Is the old terrace alive as it might be with a whole colony if money be free again? Chesterton's England and has been, and why not? Or is it all rust, ruin, death duties and mortgages and the great carriage yard empty and more pictures gone to pay taxes. When a dog is tall but not so tall as all that, that dog is a Talbot, a little long in the pastorate. Uh, when a butt is half as tall as a whole butt, that but is a small one. Uh, let back and side go bare and the old kitchen <laughs> left as the monks had left it and the rest as time has cleft it. Only shadows enter my tent as men pass between me and the sunset. Beyond the eastern barbed wire a sow with nine bonnies matronly as any Duchess of Claridge's. And for that Christmas at Maury Hewlett's, and going out from Southampton, they passed the car by the dozen who would not have shown weight on a scale, riding, riding for Noel the green holly, Noel, Noel the green holly, a dark night for the holly, that would have been Salisbury Plain, and I have not thought of the Lady Anne for this twelve years, nor of La Portelle. How tiny the panelled room where they stabbed him, in her lap almost, La Stuarda. See, tweet, deal, doll, yell, plan, yell, marry men, for the leopards and broom plants. Judah indeed is gone, and every rose, blood, red, blanch, white, that in the sunset glows, cries blood, 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 against the Gothic stone of England, as the Howard or Boleyn knows. Nor seeks the carmine 
petal to infer, nor is the white bud, time's inquisitor, probing to know if its new gnarled root twists from York's head or belly of Lancaster, or if a rational soul should stir the chance within the stem or summer shoot to advance contrition's utmost throw, seeking in thee but oblivion, not thy forgiveness, France. As the young lizard extends his leopard spots along the grass blade, seeking the green midge half an ant size. And the serpentine will look just the same, and the gulls be as neat on the pond, and the sunken garden unchanged, and God knows what else is left. And our London, my London, your London, and if her green elegance remains on this side of my rain ditch, whose lizard will lunch on some other tea bowl. Sunset, Grand Couturier. Canto 81. Zeus lies in Kerry's bosom. Kai Shan is attended of love, Santa Kithara, before sunrise. And he said, I a key which of Catholicismo, sound of Catholicismo, we poco religion. And he said, Yo creo que los reyes desparate. Kings will, I think, disappear. That was Padre Jose Elizondo in 1906 and in 1917, or about 1917. And Dolores said, Come panni, eat bread, my lad. Sergeant had painted her before he descended. It is, if he descended. Uh, but in those days, he did dump sketches. Impressions of the Velasquez in the Museo del Prado, and books cost a peseta, brass candlesticks in proportion. Hot wind came from the marshes, and dead chill from the mountains, and later Bowers wrote, but such hatred, I had never conceived such. And the London Reds wouldn't show up his friends. It is the friends of Franco working in London. And in Alcatraz, 40 years gone, they said, go back to the station to eat. You can sleep here for a peseta. Goat bells tinkled all night, and the hostess grinned. Eso es luto, ha oh, Mi marido es muerto. It is morning, my husband is dead. <laughs> when she gave me paper to write on with a black border half an inch or more deep, say five eighths of the locanda, we call all foreigners Frenchies. And the egg broke in Cabrani's pocket, thus making history. Basil says they beat drums for three days till all the drum heads were busted, simple village fiesta. And as for his life in the Canaries, Possum observed that the local folk dance was danced by the same dancers in diverse localities in political welcome. The technique of demonstration. Cole studied that, uh, not GDH, Horace. You will find, said old André Speer, that every man on that board, created Agricole, has a brother-in-law. You the one, I the few, said John Adams, speaking of fears in the abstract, to his volatile friend, Mr. Jefferson. To break the pentameter, that was the first he, 
or as Joe Bard says, they never speak to each other. If it is Baker and Concierge visibly, it's La Rochefoucauld and de Maintenon audibly. De cavro le budele. La caratate. In less than a geological epoch, says Henry Mencken. Oh, damn. Uh, some coop, some do not coop. Some things cannot be altered. You, Imon Forti Doma Tonandra, what counts is the cultural level. Thank Benny for this table, ex packing box. Don't you tell no one I made it. From a mask, fine as any in Frankfurt. It'll get you off the ground. Light as the branch of Quan. And at first, disappointed with shoddy, the bare ramshackle key, but then saw the high buggy wheels and was reconciled. George Santayana arriving in the port of Boston and kept to the end of his life that they they, they are of the Spaniard as a grace quasi imperceptible, as did Mus, the V for you of Romania, and said the grief was a full act repeated for each new condoleress working up to a climax. And George Horace said he would get beverage, Senator, beverage wouldn't talk. And he wouldn't write for the papers. But George got him by camping in his hotel and a sail in him <coughs> at lunch, breakfast, and dinner. Three articles. And my old man went on hoeing corn while George was a telling him. Come across a vacant lot where you'd occasionally see a wild rabbit, or maybe only a loose one. Oh, a leaf in the curve, and my grapes no Althea. Yet, ere the season died a cold, borne upon a zephyr's shoulder, I rose through the orient sky. Laws and Jenkins guard thy rest, no match ever be thy guest. As he tempered the viol's wood to enforce both the grave and the acute, as he curved us the bowl of the lute, Lords and Jenkins guard thy rest, Dolmetsch ever be thy guest. Hast thou fashioned so airy a mood to draw off leaf from the root? Hast thou found a cloud so light as seen neither mist nor shade? Then resolve me, tell me aright, if waller sang or down played. Your iron two will slay me suddenly, he may the bote of him not sustain. And for a hundred and eighty years, Almost nothing. It has called Tando a leger morborio. There came new subtlety of eyes into my tent, whether of spirit or hypostasis. But what the blindfold hides, or at carnival, nor any pair showed anger, saw but the eye and stands between the eyes, color, diastasis. Careless or unaware, it had not the whole tense room, nor was place for the full idols. Interpass, penetrate, casting but shade beyond the other lights, skies clear, night sea, Green of the mountain pool shone from the unmasked eyes in half-masked space. What thou lovest well remains, the rest is dross. What thou lovest well shall not be reft 
from thee. What thou lovest well is thy true heritage. Whose world? Or mine, or theirs, or is it of none? First came the sea, then thus the palpable Elysium, though it were in the halls of hell. What thou lovest well is thy true heritage. What thou lovest well shall not be reft from thee. The ants a centaur in his dragon world. Pull down thy vanity. It is not man made courage, or made order, or made grace. Put in scaled invention or true artistry, pull down thy vanity. <coughs> Pack and pull down the green cask has outdone your elegance. Master thyself, then others shall be there. Pull down thy vanity, thou art a beaten dog beneath the hail. A swollen magpie in a fitful sun, half black, half white, nor nurse thou wing from tail. Pull down thy vanity, how mean thy hates, fostered in falsity. Pull down thy vanity, wraith to destroy, niggard in charity. Pull down thy vanity, I say, pull down. But to have done, instead of not doing, this is not vanity. To have with decency knocked that a blunt should open, to have gathered from the air a live tradition, or from a fine old eye the unconquered flame, this is not vanity. Here, Error is all in the not done, all in the diffidence, the falter. I see I haven't taken up anything like the time I thought I would take. So I, uh, I didn't uh, prepare this beforehand. Uh, so I think... Basil. Basil. I think we should explain to them that passage was written in the cage. In the oh, indeed it was. That uh, pull down thy vanity was written in that cage. In and the uh, there is uh, uh, an ambiguity. Bound is at once <coughs> telling the presumptuous in general to pull down their vanity. And he's also telling his own past self to pull down his vanity. Uh, it, it is almost the most moving piece in modern poetry, I suppose, uh, the last half of that canto. Uh, the most moving piece in modern poetry. Uh, the, the feeling is very, very strong. And it is brought over in the movement of the rhythm. Uh, when you tell me, and I hope you will, what you find new in these, uh, it is obvious, and I, I won't pay much attention if, if you merely tell me uh, that Pound was, uh, not perhaps for the first time, but uh, for the first time for a very long time, uh, coming out of books and into the world, very violently into the world, uh, feeling what the world can do to you. Uh, and uh, getting a new sense of himself that of all the things he had struggled with and dealt with for 20, 25 years previously. Uh, that is so obvious it hardly needs saying. Uh, but there's more than that. Uh, there is uh, a movement of verse which I want you to, to notice, observe, uh, comparing it with earlier cantos. Uh, is I there another passage you would like me to read? Oh, God, there's so many. That you can think of and think that we can find quickly. Uh, for we have 20 minutes left. 
Come on, my dear, I thought I would have about five minutes left at this mm. point. I'm, I'm quite, uh, quite wrong in my guesswork. Uh, could you, uh, uh, in my own mind, there's a different track. I would be, although this may offend you, I don't know, but I would be very interested to know if you could tell people of your own Quaker experiences yeah. Oh dear me, no, that was quite different. When I was young, of course, I got jailed for refusing to have anything to do with the First World War. And I uh, was very pig-headed and uh, uh, insisted on... Uh, well, when in jail, they wanted me to make fenders, and I asked what fenders were first, four ships, fenders, and they were battleships, so I wouldn't make them. So they gave me a thing they called prison punishment number one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, prisons have changed exceedingly in, the, in those years. Somewhere in the late 1920s, all the prisons in the world were altered uh, and improved, uh, following, I think, the English ones were first. Uh, there was a book uh, published by Graham Wallace about the prisons. They got evidence from suffragettes, conscientious subjectors, and so forth. There's a little note by me in one of them. Uh, and uh, <coughs> this uh, astonished people. They didn't think that kind of thing happened. Uh, so they, they altered prisons, and they're much more <laughs> habitable places now. Uh, when I was on prison punishment number one, they had a beautiful system. Uh, they put you in a cell which had uh, double walls, double doors, so that no sound could reach you. Uh, with a, a little window. Oh, I dare say it was about as big as, as this book uh, in the two panes. Uh, set very deep in the walls so you could reach it to clean it and it was filthy. Uh, so you lived in a, a perpetual twilight and daytime. Uh, 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 According to Graham Wallace, I'm the only man who lived through two complete sentences of prison punishment. <laughs> Usually they had to be removed to the, the prison hospital and revived by all sorts of means. Uh, there was another guy whom uh, I met, a poor man, a tailor from Stoke Newington, uh, who uh, went through one uh, 42 days and then was removed to the hospital after a bit more, uh, whom I, I went to see when I came out of jail in his home in Stoke Newington. And he was dying of consumption and died soon after. And it was the obvious fate for anyone who got there. I was young and strong and healthy and so on. But, but uh, especially people do. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't think that it's in any way comfortable type situation. Uh, but uh, at, at least uh, I went young and he went old. Both have had experience with jails and how damned at best they can be. Mm -hmm. But also, what was the what was your Quaker basis for this whole thing? Well, That's Quakers, what? of course had a traditional objection to all war. And I was very young. Uh, when I was arrested, uh, it was on my 18th birthday, uh, so that I, I still took the Quakerism literally and uh, didn't bother to interpret or anything, just took it 
anything to do with war was sheer wicked. So I, I, I didn't have anything to do with it at all. Uh, afterwards, when I thought about it, uh, it disappeared rather bit. Uh, but you've got to be older than 18 before you uh, can break away from strong conviction of that sort. There, I was, of course, in between the bouts of jail. I was uh, sentenced uh, altogether to uh, two years and four months of the solitary confinement. Uh, but uh, it didn't come off, uh, partly because there were breaks in between the four months and two years, uh, and uh, partly because uh, I got sick of being in jail after the war was well and truly over and went on hunger strike. Uh, and they used to let people out when they were on the strike at each other. You put up with it long enough, and they tried various tricks on you. Uh, and then they let you out with a paper which licensed you to go out and go to hospital, any hospital you like, uh, for so long. And then you got to report back to jail, uh, which I just didn't do. I never reported back. Uh, <laughs> they, they tried a new trick on me. Uh, the great favorite in the old days, the suffragette days, and the early conscientious subject of days, uh, was forcible feeding. They pushed the stomach pump down your throat and fed you through that. Uh, they never tried that on me. Uh, they, they found it didn't work on so many other people. And the dirty dogs, what do you think they did? Uh, as soon as they were perfectly sure I really meant it, I'd been a couple of days without grub. Instead of the miserable, awful prison, Food. They put into my cellar beautiful, beautiful roast of chicken. And it stayed there in the cell all day. And the next morning there was a new roast chicken. Uh, and for ten days I had to live there with the smell of roast chicken in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> in front of my face uh, without eating anything. <laughs> 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 This is a long time ago. I speak as of another person. I forgot that uh, fellow with me. Could you recant the point? The, 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 the army jails in between time were even more astonishing, some of them. Uh, there was one place where I was on Salisbury Plain. And uh, it was the time just after the war of the great mutinies, one mutiny after another. Uh, the New Zealanders got vexed with the Australians and they went and burnt down a cinema that had two regiments of Australians in it. Uh, and uh, awful things of that sort were going on. And, and the guard rooms were full, crammed full. Uh, so uh, the one I was, uh, they had a lunatic who would uh, come out of the loony bed and uh, see if the army had any use for him. <laughs> uh, which, uh, what they did with everybody got loose from the Looney Bins prisons and so on, they handed them over to the army to see if they wanted them. And then they'd spend a few days in an army jail and usually were turned away again after This fellow had been a medical student. Uh, he was homicidal in the very last degree. Uh, when he first was put into the general guard room where there were perhaps 70 men, uh, he ingratiated himself with everybody by offering to gather up all the dinner plates, uh, which he did, and he got a tremendous pile of them by the door ready to hand over to the cook house wallows when they came around. Then he picked the top one off the pile and skimmed it across the room. <laughs> <laughs> then the next, the next, the next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with enormous force. <laughs> they, they went right through the, the, the uh, the three ply boarding, and some of them went through the planks of that. Uh, and if they hit you, they, they would have cut your head straight off. We had a hell of a job getting rid of them. Uh, they put it into a cell, and then uh, everything was so crowded with all these mutineers. They said, We've got to get rid of some of these people at the general guard room. Uh, and all the cells have got four people in them, and they're only meant for one. Uh, what are we going to do? Oh, of course, there's the, the homicidal maniac. And he has a cell all to himself, which put the conscientious subject to it. <laughs> so they popped me into the cell with the homicidal maniac. Uh, and in fact, he was very nice with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
But while he was there, he did two things. He had, he had got a stub of pencil somewhere, and he covered the whole of the walls of the cell from top to bottom in quite small writing with all the names of all the diseases over and over and over again. <laughs> He'd been a medical student, I think they said. Uh, and uh, he had them all on hand, and there they were thousands of names of diseases. Uh, and uh, during uh, about a week that I was with him, he twice tried to murder the chap who brought us out to uh, Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have one request, can of 49. Which is can of 49? Um, is that what sort of wood? 49? It is, isn't that the, the fat girls of fuck clippers or something? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not as you remember. Oh, no, it's the Seven Lakes, I see. Yeah. Yeah. You want to hear that? Sure. Right. This is uh, one of the ones with China in mind, but not very particularly Confucius in mind. For the Seven Lakes, by no man these verses rain, empty river, a boil, fire from frozen cloud, heavy rain in the twilight, under the cavern roof was one lantern, the reeds are heavy, bent, and the bamboos speak as if weeping, autumn moon, hills rise about lakes against sunset, Evening is like a curtain of cloud, a blur above ripples, and through it sharp, long spikes of the cinnamon, a cold dune amid the reeds. Behind the hill, the monk's bell borne on the wind. Sail past here in April, may return in October. Boat Fades in silver, slowly. Sun blaze alone on the river. Where wine flag catches the sunset, sparse chimneys smoke in the cross light. Comes then snow skirt on the river, and a world is covered with jade. Small boat floats like a lantern, the flowing water clots as with coal, and at San Yin they are a people of leisure. Wild geese swoop to the sandbar, clouds gather about the hole of the window, broad water, geese line out with the autumn, roots clatter over the fisherman's lantern. A light moves on the north skyline where the young boys brought stones for shrimp. In 1700 came Tsing to these hill lakes. A light moves on the south skyline. State by creating riches should thereby get into debt. This is infamy, this is Gerion. This canal goes still to ten she, though the old king built it for pleasure. K men ran K Q man man K Jitsu Getsu Ko Kwa Tan Fuku Dan Kai Sun up, work Sun down, to rest Dig well and drink of the water Dig feel, eat of the grain Imperial power is And to us, what is it? The fourth the dimension of stillness and the power over wild beasts. You might be a bit puzzled by the four Chinese lines there. 
I would know if there were notes to tell me what on earth they meant. They mean how bright and colorful the clouds hanging gracefully. Let sun and moon be a splendid morning after morning. You'll find that the, the last cantos you can get hold of is all comfortable, eh? around about a hundred or so, uh, are taking the weaving process at a much greater pace than anything that goes before. Thread follows thread, appears for only an instant, a line, or even just a word, and vanishes again. Uh, and uh, the effect, musically, is magnificent. And if you have read the previous cantos, not to understand them in the sense in which you are supposed to understand things for examinations and so on, but merely to have read them so that the sounds echo in your mind, uh, when you come to these late ones, each word that comes up uh, wakes some sort of echo. Some you can recognize, some you can't, but, but it's there all the same in your head. Uh, and uh, they, they get a, a most wonderful texture of poetry, such as is something brand new. <coughs> Nobody ever did it before, Ezra. Uh, and it'll be a hell of a long time before anybody is skillful enough to do it again. Though I have no doubt we shall all try. Uh, Ezra is in the same sort of position. As, uh, told his class, Spencer was in, in uh, 1580. Uh, he's tried every avenue, some of them won't work, uh, most of them will, uh, and he's shown us what can be done with them. Uh, and uh, though he himself may not in the end prove the most satisfactory of poets, I don't know what you think of Spencer, I think very highly of him, but uh, uh, he, will, he will be the toolbox into which other poets dip for a hell of a long time to come. That's what they're uh, what is candle? I've got candle 84 in my mind. Why do I have it in my mind? I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, but I've got it in my mind. Uh, it's another little piece. It's one of the hellish long ones, isn't it? Uh, 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 I may have the wrong one. 84. Uh, I may have the wrong one. Oh no, it's not very, very long. It's uh, four pages. Uh, it's one with uh, a lot of Chinese stuff. In there. That's not the one then. You'll be turned out by the engineers. No, we'll keep monitoring. Uh, anybody got any place? Alan, <laughs> smoky light. Troy, but a heap of smoldering boundary stone. Anaxiforming gaze, our uncle I Hear me, Cadmus of golden brows. The silver mirrors catch the bright stones and flare. Dawn to our waking drifts in the green, cool light. Dew haze blurs the grass, pale ankles moving, beat, beat, work, thud in the soft turf under the apple trees, chorus in farm, goat foot with the pale foot alternate. Crescent of blue shot waters, green gold in the shallows. Black cock grows in the sea pool. And by the curved, hard foot of the couch, claw foot and lion head, an old man seated speaking in the low drone, it is der lebilita, it is. Eighteen. And she went toward the window and cast her down 
All the while, the wild swallows crying, Hitty, his Cabistan's heart in the dish. It is Cabistan's heart in the dish. No other taste shall change this. And she went toward the window, the slim white stone bar making a double arch. Her even fingers held to the firm nail stone, swung for a moment, and the wind out of Rhodes caught in the pool of her sleeve. The swallows crying, tis, tis, it is. Actaeum, and the valley. The valley is thick with leaves, with leaves. The trees, the sunlight glitters, glitters atop, like a fish scale roof, like the church roof in Poitiers, if it were gold. Beneath it, beneath it, not a ray, not a sliver, not a spare disk of sunlight flaking the black, soft water, bathing the body of nymphs, of nymphs and Diana, nymphs white gathered about her, and the air, air shaking, air alight with the goddess, fanning their hair in the dark, lifting, lifting, walking, ivory, dipping in silver.